some of the major areas of concern are as follows. Uh, one is spam. And how many of you have gotten an email from a Nigerian prince who needs money uh, <laughs> transfers? We all have. Every one of us has gotten uh, these kinds of, of frauds or um, scams uh, thrown at us. 85 to 90 percent, at least, of the, the email on the internet is, is spam, and a, a, a great portion of that is tied to some sort of a criminal activity. Then there's phishing. Phishing is um, an attempt to get you to go to a website that is uh, fake, and it's an attempt to capture your personal information, your passwords, your bank account numbers, your credit card numbers, and so on. Um, there are about 6,000 of these types of sites online <coughs> on any given day. Most of them um, are spoofing uh, financial institutions and banks. Uh, PayPal is, is a very popular target. Um, the losses um, mount quickly. Malware might be, in my opinion, the, the most prevalent and most dangerous problem. This is software that is designed to infiltrate your computer or computers on a network and then get them to do things that um, you don't want them to do, usually unbeknownst to you. Um, one of the most popular ways this uh, is uh, spread uh, and controlled is through browsers. Um, earlier this week, I went to my hometown newspaper website to check on the Philly score. And um, I, would, I went to the home page, and immediately my, my uh, protection on my computer threw up a warning that malware was coming out through my browser. Now, that's not the fault of the newspaper, that uh, malware was probably coming through an advertisement served by an ad network. There's a very new one called URL Zone, and it steals money from your bank account while you're logged into your online banking. And one of the things it does is it displays a faked balance. So even you won't know when you're logged into your bank what your account balance really is. The, the software also um, steals money um, in, a, in a sly fashion because it's not greedy. It doesn't try to empty your account. It only takes smaller increments that you and your bank might not notice. The criminals that wrote this, for example, know what kinds of techniques your bank uses. Uh, to try to detect fraud and tries to get around those. That's the kind of professional <coughs> crime that we're looking at. These challenges that we face in, in dealing with these problems are as follows. Of course, no one know, owns the internet, and that's a good thing. We don't want to, to have anyone owning the internet and telling us exactly how we build businesses and, and communicate. Um, but it means that no one's in charge. Of course, maybe the solution is that everyone's in charge, but not everyone wants to participate in being a solution. Um, I'm sure Bobby Flame will talk more about the problems that international boundaries uh, pose for law enforcement. Uh, security is always an arms race. As soon as we come up with a solution, the criminals will attempt to get around it. And we also have the problem of balancing all of, all of our needs and desires. Uh, right now, there's about uh, 14 billion searches uh, conducted uh, every month. Uh, uh, on the, the major search engines, and one in seven of the clicks on paid search advertisements go places other than the, the brand that's represented. So a lot of money and a lot of inefficiency is occurring here. Um, counterfeiting, uh, you know, our uh, math shows that it's increased 45% online in terms of the amount of abuse online. And uh, phishing, you know, it's it's an interesting thing. There are a lot of ways to, to count a fish, and, and maybe we'll talk about. We actually do see some increases in forms of phishing and, uh, and fraud abuse that I don't think are in conflict to, to what uh, Greg talked about in terms of it being flat, but sort of specify some of the behavior that's occurring. The last thing with respect to um, uh, the whole idea of phishing is that not only are they going after, phishers going after consumers and commercial um, uh, clients, they're also going after internet infrastructure. We've seen large scale attacks against um, against some of the domain registrars, and we've seen some attacks against um, also registries where there have been uh, takeovers of uh, very prominent brands, domains in places like Puerto Rico and, uh, and other, uh, other areas. So uh, it, it's not a very pretty picture um, in terms of domain name abuse. Um, it's, it's largely growing in almost every aspect, and the losses are significant, and not only do they cause uh, harm to individual consumers, but they cause uh, significant economic uh, problems. The people behind Configa and things like that 
are nothing other than the same criminals that we deal with in the real world. These are not kids that are out there experimenting or bragging. This is organized crime. The other thing to understand is that while we know it's organized crime trying in some way to generate income, nothing tells us whether or what the proceeds of the crime are used for. So understand that this isn't just for buying 42-inch plasmas to run with your Xbox. It's also not used for buying fast cars and drugs. In many cases, it's used to fund uh, activities that affect all of us. So this isn't a game. Stepping back, where does malicious behavior come from? Um, and malicious behavior of all sorts at its root is, is an abuse of trust. And the uh, DNS, the internet, uh, was built around certain assumptions of trust. Uh, it was a, we all know the, the history and origins of it. Um, but what we've learned in a practical sense is that trust is not a transitive property. I trust Mike. Mike gives me good advice. Um, he, he's, um, you know, a swell guy. I, I turn to him for counsel all the time. You know, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, leave him next to my liquor cabinet. I trust Mike for certain purposes. Uh, Mike trusts Tom. Uh, Tom and Mike have a relationship in which they trust each other for certain things. Um, my trust of Mike for the purposes for which I trust him, and his trust of Tom for the purposes for which he trusts Tom, uh, is not a transitive property. It is not an A equals B equals C. So A equals C type of arrangement. I cannot trust Tom uh, simply because I know that Mike trusts Tom. Um, this happens not only on a practical level in the DNS, but this also happens in the policy development process uh, itself. Um, the problem with uh, certain assumptions that get built into policies, um, one can take a look at, and this is a, a favorite game of mine, take two things. Uh, in, in ICANN policy world that conflict with each other. Uh, but no one knows it because people are you know, very cognizant of problems. And by golly, I see a problem, and I'm a smart guy, and I know how to solve that problem. And I'm going to solve that problem. I'm not going to realize how my solution is going to interact with somebody else's solution. I think there is, there is a problem. Uh, again, I support the use of or the concept of a proxy or privacy registration system, but the current system is broken. And hopefully, um, through this new GTLD process, we may be able to explore um, other services that do allow for that uh, private listing that I'm able to maintain right now with my home phone number, while not impeding the ability of law enforcement to do their jobs in safeguarding consumers and other users of the internet. I think really troubles the company is that this is an impact upon consumers, on users of the internet. And so somebody is fraudulently using a well-known uh, um, trademark or a well-known brand name just to get somebody to pull into their system where they can tease money out of them. And I think that's going to uh, affect uh, the people who have and their confidence in the, in the internet and the ability to actually conduct business over the internet. Um, I like to use the analogy, we want to use, um, or we want to have a 9-10 approach, not a 9-12 approach. So we want to prevent 9-11 as opposed to uh, figure out who did it. And uh, as opposed to going to all the complications, you've heard all the speakers here talk about a lot of different things, uh, the criminality, the problems. You know, I would echo everything they said. Uh, the one thing that I do want to talk about is uh, what we're trying to do to uh, prevent it and uh, with some of these solutions that uh, the FBI has come up with. Um, first, I'm working with ICANN. We have um, a proposal right now that I'm working with uh, Suzanne Sen, the United States GAC representative, to ICANN, to present to ICANN uh, through the GAC, to the ICANN board on taking some of the measures that uh, Rodney was talking about, which is uh, preventing some of the uh, false data, uh, the concealment on the DNS, uh, namely the who is, as with ICANN, these I can. These all bottom-up organizations, and you kind of have to be in it to win it. You have to be proactive. You have to let people know what your concerns are, especially law enforcement. Because I think that the speed at which everything is traveling, if we're not there to, to let people know what these real concerns are, like Rodney and, and everyone else that has been up on these panels has voiced, um, it's going to get lost. And um, we want to make sure we're doing our part uh, to be proactive and to make sure that we keep the internet.
internet and the society that we are in charge to, to protect is safe. The industry has been looking at phishing, malware, configure worm, uh, and it just seems uh, that the criminals always are ahead, a step ahead in terms of uh, innovation, in terms of being able to take advantage of loopholes, etc. Um, about a year and a half ago, kind of sitting through a, a, a similar session, um, I had looked at a report that was put out by McAfee. And I realized that uh, there are also security vendors out there that are reporting on this, uh, but are really not close to the problem because they're, uh, they really are depending on getting a fee. When you look at it, you see that there's a chain um, of actors that are privy to information about a particular fraud. From, uh, you know, from the early on when a domain name is registered, it's certainly the registry and then you know, the registrar. Uh, then you have um, you know, any particular brand or company, maybe they were compromised, as you saw before, but by the time they find out. Uh, then you have law enforcement and so on and so on. And you have security companies uh, who get the feed and who, who sell the feed to you know, organizations like us. And the, the problem was that everybody looks at the problem uh, from their own perspective, using their own data, looking at their own processes. It's sort of like looking at the elephant, but everybody's looking at the same elephant, but just looking at different sides. And that's a problem. And, and in order for us to solve it, and at least you know, be consistent uh, with, the, with the criminal activity that's taking place, we've got to take a different approach. This approach of, I'm going to look out for my neighborhood, my zone, my TLD, my um, you know, my section of the pie isn't working in a, an internet that is increasingly interconnected and frankly all of us, the success of any one of us depends <coughs> on the success of the others.